this is my blog with the resources, uh, the computer models that uh, open source physics, uh, EJS, I have put them, put them up in this uh, particular blog. So how can we use easy Java simulation? Uh, essentially two uh, pedagogical approach. One is the inquiry which all of us are familiar with. Uh, through, our, through my experience, it is thought that it would be a good idea to use a blend of real equipment rather than uh, just purely relying on computer models. Uh, this gives the <coughs> real life uh, equipment a connection to, to real life. And the computer models can be used as a way to allow uh, individual or pair work. And we also find that uh, the guided inquiry is generally more successful and we need in actual fact, two teachers rather than the current setup of one uh, for, for this uh, approach to work rather well. The other one is constructionism uh, by Professor Simon, made popular by him. It is the learn by making. Uh, I'm an example of how uh, this pedagogy could actually look like. Uh, my physics ain't fantastic because I teach high school, but um, I can say that uh, give me a, a task and then let me make a, a computer model and through this performance, learning, you can see uh, whether I know the physics that you're talking about. Okay, so straight away, I would like to talk about the, the first model. Uh, this is taken off uh, Andrew's uh, model. It's called the ripple tank. <coughs> so in this uh, computer model, uh, it, is, it is a two-source interference. You could check on any of them to see how in effect, if one of them is uh, activated while the other is not, and then this is the superposition of the or interference of the two sources. Uh, okay, so in my interaction with my school teachers, they said that okay, so this is cool, uh, but you know I want my displacement to be shown. So um, when you check on these various boxes, uh, which is color coded, uh, you can see here that the displacement are in phase. So when S1 is going up, S2 is up at the same time. And <coughs> these are the input boxes. These are new features that are not available in Andrew's version. But the teachers that I interact with say that they would like to be able to change the amplitude to a number which they find suitable for their own teaching and learning. So I, I put it in and it, it, it should work, but I'm, I'm not going to try it now because of the interest of time. Now the other feature uh, which was not available was this uh, in instantaneous uh, intensity as well as the average intensity of the uh, screen pattern. So as the, the ripple tank wave uh, hits the screen, this should be the pattern that you should see. Okay? While this is the, the typical uh, intensity, uh, average intensity that the students are required to know. Okay, so we, we found that this could be quite useful. I'm going to do uh, this year, I'm going to do, try it out with five schools. So uh, maybe next time I'll come back and, and share with you what are our findings. Now this, the other thing is called a phase difference. I'm not particularly, I don't quite remember whether this is in Andrew's original uh, version. But this clearly, um, because of the design of the way, the side view of this simulation, you can see that this is actually uh, in antiphase, uh, a, a typical language that we use in science but uh, Greek or, or, or whatever language to the student because they simply can't understand. So through this simulation, we find that actually uh, you don't have to talk very much. In fact, some talking is encouraged by the teacher, but uh, essentially you let the student find out through uh, exploring. Now the other feature which I built is this thing called the coherence. Uh, if you were to uncheck the coherence button, you can actually get uh, to slide other, uh, the other uh, frequency for example. And you can see now that the interference factor is no longer uh, average, it's no longer stationary. So this will give you the idea to the student, I hope, I mean with some articulation from the teacher, that incoherence cannot result in a fixed interference pattern on the screen. Uh, this is a, a phenomenon which you can observe in light as well. Okay, so in 3D I will talk about it in the other uh, simulation which I will have later on. Now this is another one which uh, was done by Fu Kun, uh, the Taiwan professor. Uh, I follow his work quite closely. Um, so uh, before this simulation, there were no other that I could know of that's made in EGS. So I spoke to him uh, on to the online forum and then I got him to uh, design something for, for, the, for this particular phenomenon. 
for the showing of the diffraction. Uh, so diffraction. So if the slit width, in this case, uh, this is the separation. If the slit width, let's see how I have it here. So if the slit width is very big, you can see uh, it's, it's a bit slow, but if the slit width is big, so the wave generally goes through. So the professor uh, already built all this. So I, as a high school teacher, what I did is I just look at the code and then I, uh, I made additional design features that I feel is uh, useful for my students to learn from. Now, uh, one other thing that was quite cool, and I thought I should just share it with you. Uh, I didn't share this the other time when I was in Portland in 2010. Uh, there, are, there are various ways of visualizing this. So if you think that visualization is a key uh, approach to allowing the students to learn and, and see, then this will be a good tool to use, uh, EJS. Now, it actually allows you to render in 3D. So in 3D, uh, it looks something like that. So I'm manually changing it, and you can actually tilt it a little bit to give you the 3D perspective. Uh, it doesn't turn out to be very well, uh, but on my screen, it's not too bad. Uh, but you can see that the wave are in planes, and then they come over here. Once it hit the barrier, uh, and then much of it passes through the middle while uh, there isn't much by the side. Uh, this is one which uh, I saw from the open source physics uh, community, is by John. Uh, I thought this is quite interesting, so uh, I thought I'll share it since the theme of this uh, meeting is on wave. Uh, so here we actually design it such that we have the usual uh, notations that we have in our lecture notes for associated learning with a pen and paper. There are, calculate, there are input boxes here for students to check answers so they can do this uh, keying in. And we thought that this modeling aspect of it was quite interesting. Uh, to, to some level, uh, the student need to either key in the correct formula uh, in order to mimic the phenomena of the standing wave in a pipe, or they could actually select one from the drop down menu, which we, we would like to make it easy for the student to do modeling. Uh, this one is uh, <coughs> on EM wave. Uh, I, I <coughs> so this is to show the, the linear polarization of the, the E view and the B view. So this is the two, this is a simple two D view and this is the three D view. And I decided that you know this doesn't really help the student very much. So I added certain stuff like the wavelength, you know, so that they know oh this is a wavelength corresponding to a 3D uh, plane. Uh, this one is on black body radiation. I have this on Combrade for a long time, but eventually I took the time to, to improve it because John uh, releases another model that had this ability to see the individual color contributions and then the, the resultant uh, intensity from the black body radiation. So I, I look at the code and I change it incorporated it into Fukun's original model, and then I, I put it back on, onto the forum again. Uh, these are some of my research interests, predominantly open source physics, Tracker, and EJS. Uh, a big thank you to people like Paco, Fukun, uh, Wu Gang, uh, Douglas, Mario, and Andrew, uh, Taha, Michael, and uh, Todd. Okay. These are the, the libraries that you can get more computer models if you are interested to remix it to your own purpose. Okay, so what's in it for you? Uh, I, I guess uh, these are the two usual uh, discussion prompts that I go to to learn from the uh, open source physics community. Now, tying back with the, the pedagogy which I talked about, you can actually co-construct and, and produce quality educational resources for learner-centered inquiry learning. So I hope through this session you can contribute and share. Uh, all my computer models are available on my blog, and these are my Facebook and Twitter account which you can find me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. On the 3D one, did you use Java 3D or did you go around Java 3D? Uh, if I understand your question correctly, uh, Java 3D is a rendering machine which is not uh, used in any of the models. It's okay. just simple 3D. Yeah. No, but EJS uses Java 3D. Yeah. 
Oh, they do take it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so the uh, the engine that runs the simulation it uses uh, Java 3D, and that also it allows you for using other uh, VRML, for example, or old VRML, so you can render it as well. That sounds cool. Yeah, it is cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, EGS is a very, uh, you notice what he was trying to show, it's open source, so you can take the simulation and very easily uh, adapt it, kind of add features to it, remove features to, uh, to adapt it to your own uh, teaching style, environment, needs. And there is, he produced a lot of simulations. Fuquan produced a lot of them, and there is, that's a huge library of simulations that's there. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, so this concludes our session. Let's thank all of our speakers.